<coughs> so the last talk in this session is a general proof framework for recent AES distinguishers. And uh, as already said, it's basically a follow-up to a previous talk. The paper is by Christina Bura and Kanto and Daniel Kogia, and Daniel will give the talk. Uh, thank you, Gaetan, and thank you, Lorenzo, for your, for your talk. Uh, this uh, work with uh, Anne Canto and uh, Christina Bora is uh, subsequent to the work of uh, Lorenzo Grassi, Christian Reichberger, and Sandra Renium and uh, AS Distinguishers. Indeed, we have studied the recent AS Distinguishers and uh, we have uh, managed to give a proof for them that allowed us to generalize that, them for other SPN ciphers. So I'll begin with the necessary preliminaries, even though if uh, Lorenzo did it. So we work with the four by four matrices with uh, scalars in F2 to the eight. And I'm going to define some subspaces of this, uh, this uh, vector space. So first we have the columns, uh, which are defined by, uh, which are sets where whose non-zero, whose elements have non-zero elements on the first column, for example, for column zero. If we consider the several indices, we it's just the direct sum of column spaces. So direct sums of column spaces give column spaces. And uh, there are other interesting subspaces. There are diagonals, which uh, are defined such that uh, the image through shift rows gives col give column spaces. There are anti-diagonals, who are images through shift rows of the column spaces, and finally mixed spaces, which are the images by the mixed columns of the anti-diagonal spaces. What's interesting about those uh, subspaces is that uh, diagonals are mapped to columns after the run function of the AES, and columns are mapped into the mixed space after one run function of the AES. But the AES is a key alternating cipher, so what we want from those subspaces is to, to verify a much stronger property. And this is the property of subspace trails. So if I consider a function f, subspaces u and v, I'll say that uh, u and v define a subspace trail through f if every coset of u is mapped into a coset of v. And uh, the good news is that uh, diagonals and columns define subspaces, uh, subspace trails for the run function of the AES, as well as columns and uh, mixed spaces. This is enough to understand what the multiple of eight distinguisher is about. So take an element A, you take a diagonal space and a mixed space. And if you count the number of pairs uh, of elements who belong to, well, of elements from this coset uh, of the diagonal, whose difference after five rounds belong to the same, to the chosen mixed space, well, this number will always be a multiple of eight. So what have we done with that? Um, in the original paper, so I at uh, 2017, uh, it was said in the, in the proof that uh, the, this multiple of eight property uh, would not depend of the details of the S-box, but that the linear layer would need a maximal branch number. Well, we weren't really conv convinced with that, and uh, we had to write a new proof to be convinced that the maximal branch number is not necessary. And the fact that we didn't need this maximal branch number made us ask if uh, it was possible to adapt these distinguishers to other SPN ciphers. So we, have, we will have to look into the details of the proof. What's interesting is that we have those uh, two round subspace trails. The key thing is that those subspace trails are linked by a one round property between mixed spaces and di diagonals. This property should look familiar. If you look at the number of pairs of elements from uh, this coset uh, of a mixed space, that whose difference after, after one round belongs to the same diagonal, this number is a multiple of eight. To prove this, we begin with uh, the definition of an equivalence relation between pairs of states. So here I have the example of a, of a pair of states in the mixed space zero. So this is a dimension four subspace. And if we look carefully at this, this, the elements of this pair, we see that they share coordinates on basis vectors two and three, but they have different coordinates on, columns on basis vectors zero and one. And then we define the information set K of such a pair 
as the indices of the basis vectors where the coordinates differ. So in my example, the, the information set will be 0, 1. If I take this other pair, I see that it also has different, same, uh, same coordinates on basis vectors 2 and 3, but different coordinates on uh, basis vectors 0 and 1. Moreover, if I look carefully at uh, coordinates on basis vectors 0 and 1, they are the same as the first pair, but they have been swapped. So that's how I define an equivalence relation. If I take two pairs P and Q, if they share the same information set, and if inside the information set the coordinates are the same but have been at most swapped, I'll say that those pairs are equivalent. What's really nice with this uh, equivalence relation is that this uh, function delta, which, com which takes as input an unordered pair and computes the difference after five rounds, well, this function delta is constant on equivalence classes. Another nice property is that the cardinality of equivalence classes can be easily computed uh, in function of the size of the information set. So I have this power of two, and uh, this exponent is always bigger than three, which means that uh, this uh, cardinality will always be a multiple of eight. So if I take back the lemma, if I write the number n as the number of pairs uh, whose difference after one round belong to the same diagonal, I can express it as uh, the cardinality, I mean, as the number of pairs whose image through delta belongs to the diagonal. Since equivalence classes uh, form a partition, I can write n as the sum over the equivalence classes, and if you look at those uh, intersections, the fact that delta is constant on equivalence classes means, uh, implies that uh, this intersection is either the empty set, either the whole class. And since all the classes have a cardinality which is a multiple of eight, the number n is a multiple of eight. So what about the branch number? Well, the inference of the branch number is the following. If I take B, if I call B the branch number, uh, it, permits, it allows me to refine in the, in the expression for which equivalence class I will have an empty set or possibly a non-empty set. But it won't affect the multiple of property. So our first question is answered, and uh, we will see now how we can use this proof to, for other SPNs. Well, I have to explain how we generalize uh, a bit this proof. So remember that a few slides earlier, we defined the mixed spaces as the image of columns through the linear layer of the AES. Then, uh, once we had the mixed spaces, I defined an equivalence relation, uh, which was highly dependent on the structure of the mixed spaces. Indeed, I needed to express basis vectors, coordinates, and this equivalence relation uh, allowed me to state this uh, very important theorem for me, and which relies, uh, which depends on the, the, the round function of the AES. So there has to be some uh, magic between uh, the structure of the mixed space and the round function of the AES to have the theorem to hold. What is it then? Well, I'll give you a hint. This is the basis of the mixed space 0, 2 in the canonical basis. Uh, the canonical basis is basically the basis on which the sub bytes operation is defined. And what should be obvious is that this basis forms a block diagonal matrix. That's we, that will be the, the main characterization of sub, subspaces that could replace mixed spaces in what we want to do. We, we call them compatible with subbytes subspaces. So what characterizes a, such a subspace V is that it got, it's got a basis G which can be expressed as the block diagonal matrix uh, in the canonical basis. The blocks can have any size. Uh, what matters is the number of blocks. Indeed, the number of blocks H will give me uh, the modulus of the, the cardinality of equivalence classes. Well, this is a, 
more trivial example than uh, the previous one, but this is the, 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 the mixed base which is used in the Eurocrit uh, paper uh, and in the mixture differential we just saw. So you see the block diagonal basis of uh, M0, so it's compatible with the bytes and the theorem holds and everything. Well, I get back to the first mixture, to the mixture differential uh, of Lorenzo, because this uh, this way of uh, th seeing things permits to to prove it in uh, another way. So uh, I'll state it with uh, my own notations, which are very inspired of uh, Lorenzo's uh, notations. So I take an element A, I take this vector subspace U, and I take a mixed uh, I chose a mixed space. I take elements of this form, P, uh, P0, P1, Q0, Q1, and the result is that the difference after four rounds of the pair P belongs to the mixed space I've chosen if and only if the difference after four rounds of the pair Q belongs to the mixed space. Well, let's prove it our way. So this subspace U can be expressed as this intersection. I define this subspace V. And what we already know is that U and V form a subspace trail for the round function, which means that the images of P, P0, P1, Q0, Q1, all after one round, all belong to the same coset of V. What's interesting with V is that it's compatible with subbytes because of the block diagonal basis. Now if we, had, we just compute what P0, P1, Q0, Q1 give after one round, and what we got is that the way we've chosen P0, P1, Q0, Q1, uh, their images form equivalent pairs in the compatible coset V plus B. Then the theorem holds. And this permits to have this equality. So this should remind you of what Lorenzo just showed us. And this equality, thanks to the subspace trails from diagonals to mixed spaces, gives the final result. So this is not a game-changing cryptanalytic uh, result to have a, this a different proof, but what's interesting is that we, had a unifi we have a unified framework for both multiple of properties and mi different mixture differentials and we can prove them the same way. Well, this allows us to have this generalization, uh, allows us also to adapt it to other SPN ciphers, so I'll give you two examples. First one is Midri. So Midri is very similar in structure to the AES. The interesting f thing for me is that the mixed columns, which is defined by this mat matrix, has branch number four. So it's not maximal, because maximal branch number would be five. Thanks to the work of Leander, Tescan, and Wimmer, uh, we had algorithms that can prove that the longest subspace trace we can get for Midori are of the same form as for the AES. So we take columns and we can define diagonals and mixed spaces in the same fashion. And we have two rounds of subspace trails. The mixed spaces for Midori, so for example, here you have the Midori mixed space zero have also block diagonal basis with four blocks. So we also have equivalence classes with cardinality multiple of eight, because there are four blocks. And hence, we have the multiple of eight distinguisher on five rounds for midori, even if the branch number is, is four. So this, we do not claim any important cryptanalytic result again, because Midori has got 16 or five rounds, so, or 20 rounds, so five rounds is not a lot compared to the, the total number of rounds, but uh, still in interesting to illustrate that the branch number doesn't need to be maximal to have this kind of distinguishes. The other example is Klein. Uh, it's got a slightly different state. Uh, but the components are nearly the same, uh, substitution layer, permutation, and a mixed column. Then just, so again, the algorithms from, uh, the, for that from uh, Leander, Tescan, and Wimmer uh, allow to find the longest subspace trails. So it's very similar to what we had with the AES and Midori. 
And if you look at the client mix space, uh, for example, the client mix space zero here, it's got a block diagonal matrix uh, with two blocks. What's interesting for me here is that that changes the modulus of the, the cardinality of the equivalence classes. It will only be two here. So we have a multiple of two distinguisher for five rounds of cli for Klein. So again, uh, when compared to the total number of rounds of Klein, well, the interest is not purely cryptanalytic, but it's still interesting to see that we can have other than multiple of eight uh, properties, but we have, can also have multiple of two, multiple of four, and so on. And all of this, thanks to this uh, adapted lemma, we managed to get uh, with block diagonal basis. So as a conclusion, our generalized proof framework with uh, the algorithms of uh, Lander, Tescan, and Wimmer can find mixture differential properties, uh, distinguishes, and multiple of properties in kind of a systematic way for any SPN. Well, I'm not saying that uh, this will cover a large number of rounds, but uh, it can be done in a systematic way. As for the improvements uh, of these techniques, I think they are highly limited by the, the length of the subspace trails we can get. Uh, but basically, the longest subspace trail we can have, uh, if the final space of the subspace trails can have a block, uh, block diagonal basis, we can build such a distinguisher. But again, the length of, subs of such a subspace trails is too limited to give big improvements of these techniques. Well, thanks for listening, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Do we have questions? Thank you. Uh, I think you basically answered my question with your last point, but just to be sure. So uh, now that you have tested this kind of distinguisher in a few different kind of structure. If you want to stick to an aligned design strategy where you have, well, sub bytes and uh, shifts and et cetera, what's the best and the worst you could do to resist those distinguishers? So for instance, is it to, if you have a full state uh, matrix multiplication, does it really destroy everything very quickly or can you still uh, when you say full state, I understand over F2? Uh, dense, no, uh, still on the, the size of the... Of the new balls? Of the cells, yeah. yes, but on uh, but a dense matrix, for instance. Um, well, I, I, I don't think that's going to change, if I understood correctly. Well, you see, for example, that for the... Da, 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 da. Yeah, for the AS we have this, where having a dense matrix would maybe change the, the, the we would have dif maybe different values for M0 than for M1 and uh, others, but it won't change, maybe not, don't change the, the, the block diagonal basis fact. I'm not sure I understood correctly your, your question. If I wanted to, 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 I mean, to break this kind of thing, for example, for Krypton, uh, which has, uh, a linear layer which is only F2 linear, uh, this wouldn't work. Because the, the, the fact that the, this is uh, F2 to the 8 linear uh, allows to, to have more, more runs in the subspace trace or, and to have these, those block diagonals uh, matrix. OK. Thanks. Oh, for questions? So, ich nur let's thank the speaker again and all the speakers of the session. Applaus